this video, we're going to show how to create a block symbol, um, but also something that's a bit fixed as far as uh, how it's represented. So the the standard block, if I go right click new component, and I'm just going to create a new, uh, new block and I'm going to show some of the limitations out of it. Uh, uh, just leave everything blank. I'm just going to go straight to component six. Um, I'm not going to worry about any of this stuff. I click next. Um, so I've got a block uh, here and I'm just going to place some connectors on it. Um, just so DTO4 for argument's sake. And I'll just put some uh, some of these uh, Deutsch connectors onto it. Um, and then I'll place a few. So I mean here you can determine your device designations uh, as required, but I'm just going to keep placing them and just let it go to the next available, um, like so. And then I'll put another four. And I'm just going to call it, um, let's just say, out one. Two. and I'm just placing them in this sort of an order but it doesn't really matter so assuming that we've got in and out one two and three but again it really doesn't really matter depends what you want to call it etc so I've got four and I've got the block so then I can go right click save the database so in my project um, currently there's no and I'm just going to refresh my database by pressing F5 Yep, and then we've got a new component six. So E3 will automatically place it. Oops, sorry. If I go right click, place with connectors, uh, it's automatically going to place it in a, in a funny way, I guess, or in whatever way. If I had more than that connectors, uh, more than um, 12, it starts to get really messy anyway. So, I mean, even still, it's pretty bad. So, you know, normally you're going to have to expand it or, or want to expand it. Uh, and I'm just going to place them up here um as required so we've got and now this is a good example where i've got my out one two three and i want these so i want these j's to be on my right and my outs to be here um and i want them all squished in and then you can see pretty quickly that i'm running well it's getting pretty messy and it's pretty hard to read so uh, same as this stuff i can move these um whoops these two are uh, locked. I can go right click text properties and I can get rid of the lock so I can move it and I can move these just here for now. Um, so I'm just going to call it um, um, whatever, I'm going to call it unit um, and then I'm going to change this text size so if I go select everything I'm just going to make life easy and go text properties, uh, unlock it while I'm at it and I'm going to change it to I don't know, 1.8 and let's go 1.5 just for argument's sake and you can see it's it's making a bit more sense now so um what i want i'll zoom in a bit more you know i, I want to move these uh, so it's a bit out of the way it doesn't really matter that it's a dto4 realistically um i mean i already know that the first is dto4 so if i wanted to i can delete these um Or rather, I can just tick it so it's invisible. I don't need them. And then the same connector, so again, I can get rid of these and then go right click text properties and then just click invisible. Um, I don't really need this information. It's there, but I don't really want it to be visible. So I'll select all these again and I'm just going to move that to a more um, useful position. Uh, like so. So now I can see it's out one, two, three. Uh, and I might even want to move it over a bit more. Out one, two, three, and then I'll do the same for this size. So I'll select everything, I go right click, text properties, I'll make it 1.5. I already did that. Um, and then I'll get rid of, uh, actually, here I've got different ones. So, um, you know, I might want to keep the part number in these ones. Um, again, they're all out of eight. So I'll go right click and I'll make them all invisible except for the first one. 
you know, this is just an example. You can really do whatever you want with it. Um, but then now I'll select those and I'll move them so it's uh, in a good spot. Oops. Okay, so J1234, fantastic. Uh, you know, these two now, I want to move it um, here, you know, and that could be the co component code. Again, if you don't need the component code, it doesn't really matter. Um, you can get rid of that anyways. Again, you can um, just make it invisible. It's there, but um, if you go to your device properties, um, you can just tick it, untick it if need be. But I'll just make it invisible just to show what exactly what I want. Um, make it smaller now. Um, I'll bring this side in. Oops. I might put that down there first. And then I'll bring this one in here. Alright, so I've got something I'm happy with. Uh, this is exactly what I want. So I guess from the first one, um, you know, when I bring it in, it brings it like that, which is pretty useless. Uh, you've got this one here now. So I can select everything, go File, Export, Drawing. And I'm just putting it in the, the desktop and I'm going to call it just Unit. Um, and we'll go from there. So in my database editor now, I can go right click anywhere, new component, and I'm just going to call it a sub circuit. Um, just you can give it a name and obviously your um, uh, whatever else and your attributes, etc. But I'm going to leave it blank. You need a path, the um, the part, so the E3P, select that one there, and then it'll show you a, a representation of, of what it looks like, and then you just save the database. So now here I can just press F5 again and it's just going to come down the bottom because I've got no attributes attached to it. And then new component 7. So now if I bring one over, unit 1, uh, assuming I've already got one, it's going to be unit 1. Uh, the the uh, device designations of the connectors are going to be the same. Uh, unit 2, unit 3, unit 4, whatever. Um, but it's always going to look like the same one. So uh, that should give you a bit of an idea how to create a, a useful Block, um, and then that way you can define the way to represent it and then quickly drag it in and out every time you need it. Um, hope that makes sense. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask a question. Thank you.